So you've got a Chromebook and it runs all that wonderful stuff that we find on the web. It can also run uh, Android apps, but what about some Linux? Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now Google have started rolling out Linux support to a few Chromebooks that are out there. I happen to have one of them and today I want to tell you about what you can do on Linux on Chrome OS, what will be coming in the future and what it all means. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So Google announced uh, Linux for Chromebooks a little while ago, and it was first initially rolled out only on the Pixelbook, which of course is Google's very expensive uh, Chromebook, and they showed kind of Android Studio running on a, a Chromebook, and it would look really nice. But now they've started to roll it out to a couple of more models, including the Asus C101 Flip that I have. And so I've been able to activate that and take this Linux uh, support for a spin. Now it's worth saying at this point, this stuff is very, very initial stages. We're in the testing stages here and lots can go wrong, lots does go wrong, and it's certainly not a seamless experience yet. So if you have a Chromebook that supports Linux apps, then you need to do a few things. First of all, you need to actually switch to the developer stream of Chrome OS. So not the stable one, not the beta one, but the developer stream. And then you need to go into Chrome and activate some flags. And then finally, once those flags have been activated, you can go into the settings and then uh, turn on the Linux support. Now the Linux support is done by offering what's called a container. So you don't have direct access to the Linux that's beneath Chrome OS itself. Really it's a type of virtualization technology, kind of Linux inside Linux. And that does present some interesting challenges. For example, when it comes to networking, the container kind of has its own IP address and its own kind of view of the networking world than maybe what the Chromebook has. And when it comes to switching files, there's a kind of a shared area that you can get access to from within the file web browser, but you're not actually just dealing with the same filing system. It's like, as I said, it's Linux inside of Linux and there has to be a kind of a bridge into it. So what can you do with Linux on Chrome OS? Well, first of all, of course, you can run a terminal. And when you run a terminal, you can do all the normal things you would do from a terminal, like listing directories and looking at files and looking at processes and, and using the networking and pinging things. And you can do all the kind of things that you'd expect from a Linux terminal, including using text editors, including using all the kind of binary tools that you would normally find. Now, if you want to know more about the Linux command line, I've got several videos here on Gary Explains that explain that all to you, and I'll leave links to them in the description below. But just having a terminal command, although good fun, is really not what the point of this is. The point is to be able to get access to all of those uh, different Linux packages that are out there that you find for distributions like uh, Ubuntu and for Debian and Fedora and so on. And to that end, this container is based on Debian and you get access to all of the Debian repositories that are out there on the internet. Now, of course, because Chromebooks come, some of them with an Intel processor and some with a processor uh, based on the ARM architecture, actually the packages that are available are different depending on which processor you've got. There's a core set of packages that are exactly the same. For example, like LibreOffice, which I talk about in a minute, but there are some packages that work on Intel that don't work on uh, the ARM-based processors. For example, I tried to run and install uh, uh, Android Studio because that's the showcase that Google demonstrated for the Pixelbook. And while it does actually run and I do actually get the installation process working and it will actually bring up the menus and I can start a new project, at some point it just crashes uh, and then and the whole thing just dies. And I've tried a few times. Basically, it will work in the future. I'm very, very sure of that but it's just not quite there yet. And that would also be true of other popular packages like the Sublime Text Editor and uh, Atom.io and other things like this. If they are kind of packages that are from developers that have been concentrating only on the Intel architecture, they're not gonna be available yet on ARM. But having said that, there are lots of packages that are out there. For example, I was able to install LibreOffice without any problem at all, use the apt get command, which is what you'd use on any Linux uh, Ubuntu or Debian based Linux distribution to install a package over the internet. It downloads, it installs, and then you get access to the word processor and to the spreadsheet and to the presentation software, and it all works seamlessly. Ironically, you can even install programs like Firefox actually on your Linux app, uh, 
partition of your Chrome OS so you can have Firefox running on Chrome OS if that's the kind of thing you wanted to do. Of course, there's also a few games out there. So for example, I installed a 2048 game and that was able to install and run. So basically, whatever it is that you want, you need to check that it's either available for Intel or for ARM, depending on which Chromebook you have. And then you just go ahead and install it like you would on a normal Linux distribution. Now, when it comes to development, there are lots and lots of options here. And I personally tried uh, Java and Python and C and Google's Golang to make sure that you were able to download the right packages, install them, and actually compile programs, and you can. So taking C, for example, you can uh, install GCC, you can then write some C code, you compile it, and it compiles it natively to uh, ARM, in my case, because I was using the uh, Asus flipbook, but also, of course, to Intel, if you're using an Intel-powered uh, Chromebook. So you get native speed applications running on your Chromebook. It's also great to see Google's Golang there. I'm a bit of a Golang fan. And of course, popular languages like Java and Python are all fully supported. The biggest problem seems to be getting an integrated development environment, an IDE, that will allow you to really easily develop and build and run your kind of programs. I tried out a few, like Eclipse, like Android Studio itself, like IntelliJ IDEA, and really they're not quite there yet. Although they do come up, although they will actually run, they crash. For example, when I ran IntelliJ IDEA, I tried to write a Kotlin project. As soon as I cut and paste in some Java code, which would then be automatically converted into Kotlin, it just crashed. So there's, there's still, this is still beta software. This is still test software, but the future looks very, very bright when it comes to what we'll be able to achieve on Intel and ARM powered uh, Chromebooks. And also if you're a web developer, I, I checked and I installed Apache and uh, MySQL and PHP, for example, and they all installed fine. Again, trying to connect to the uh, Apache server is a bit complicated because it's running inside this container. So you have to find the IP address of the container. And then when you connect to it from the uh, web browser in Chrome OS, it's like actually connecting from one machine to another, even though it's happening internally. But that does work once you get the addressing sorted out and you can bring up the, uh, the uh, Apache test page. I then was able to create a test PHP script and also able to bring up that PHP page and that worked absolutely fine. So if you're looking at doing web development, this is certainly also a possibility. But again, I must underline this is all currently test software. So overall, what did I discover about all of this? First of all, if you are familiar with the command line in Linux, then you're gonna be able to access a lot of things very easily from within inside these Linux container. If you don't really know much about the Linux command line, then this is gonna be something that's maybe a bit uh, difficult for you. There's not all the great kind of little widget programs and GUIs and everything you might find on a fully developed uh, desktop, like say, you know, uh, Ubuntu or, or Fedora or something like that. This is much more kind of roll your sleeves up and get down into the dirt and kind of do it for yourself. But if you can do that, then things like LibreOffice and other programs do actually install. Things like the compilers for C and the compilers for Golang, they all do install and you can use them and you can produce native code. It's also interesting that when you do install a actually a GUI app like uh, LibreOffice, the, those programs do appear in your start menu uh, on Chrome OS. So you can just go to the start, you can bring up the menu of apps. So you might have, let's say, you know, a kind of a native uh, app in there like Google Docs. You might also have kind of like Subway Surfer from Android, and then you might have LibreOffice and you can pick which one of them you ch run just from that start menu. So from that point of view, it is actually quite easy. And I'm sure that it's gonna get easier as this technology develops and as Google kind of bring it through to maturity. There definitely is a difference between running this on ARM and running it on Intel. As I said, for example, uh, Google uh, have been keen to show that you can run Android Studio on the Intel powered Chromebooks. That's not there yet on the ARM powered Chromebooks. And also things do go wrong. I had to delete the whole container once and start again because it got itself into such a mess. It just couldn't recover and I had to just delete it all and start again. So that it is at this stage definitely something that's going to be a little flimsy. It's not all not very robust and it's certainly going to go wrong. However, in terms of the future, I really can see a, a, a wonderful future ahead where we have Chrome OS 
uh, Android apps and Linux apps seamlessly working together on a single device. However, one thing this will mean, and that is that Chrome uh, book manufacturers need to bump up the amount of internal storage they include on their devices. At the moment, we are looking at kind of 16 gigabytes, 32 gigabytes, because Chrome OS was envisaged for just using the cloud. So all your Google Docs, all your emails, all your photos were all kept in the cloud all the time and the local storage wasn't really needed for anything at all. But now with Android apps, and then even more so with these Linux apps, you're gonna need local storage. So I hope to see Chromebooks coming out in the future that do bump up uh, that amount of internal storage so that we can actually enjoy these three different ecosystems seamlessly together. Okay, so really I do suggest if you've got a compatible uh, Chromebook, and I'm sure there are gonna be more and more devices that are supported. I'm making this now during July 2018. Absolutely other devices are gonna be supported during uh, the next year or so. So whenever you do get support, do go ahead and enable it and play with it. You can't break your Chromebook. You're not gonna break anything. It's just good fun to play with it and experiment to see what Google are doing for the future of Chrome OS. And my name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explained. You know what I'm gonna ask, please subscribe, please give this a video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and also please share this on social media. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.